Puzzle Fam, this is Richard, aka Piece by Piece Puzzler. I want to welcome you back to my channel for an exciting video in which I'm going to be trying a puzzle by the brand Art and Fable Puzzle Company. So first I have an admission, which is that I've actually tried an Art and Fable puzzle before. However, I completely failed at getting this puzzle together. So this is going to be take two. So to give you a bit of backstory, about a year ago, I decided to pre-order this puzzle by uh, Art and Fable, which has artwork by this artist named R.S. Conant. And I was blown away by the design of this puzzle, which is called Mantis Mundi. So I put in a pre-order for it. It's a thousand pieces, here it is. And I got the puzzle about May of last year, 2021. And I started sorting the pieces. I got working on it a little bit and I got stalled so fast. I don't know what it was, maybe I was a bit of a less experienced puzzler at the time, but the very, very intricate artwork of this one just completely broke my brain. So after about two or three hours of just struggling to put together small groups of pieces, I decided to pack it in and move on to something easier. And so far I have not yet come back to this puzzle because it's sort of a, a, a puzzle of shame for me that I couldn't get it together. So this one, I tried. It's called Mantis, Mantis Mundi. I think the artwork is beautiful and I probably will come back to this at some point. But the point of this is, this was the puzzle that broke me and I needed to find some form of redemption with Art and Fable puzzles. So I've been keeping an eye on their artwork and there was one that caught my eye recently on Instagram and it's this one, which also conveniently happens to have artwork by Robert Stephen Conant, AKA R.S. Conant. So I decided to snag this one. It's called Microcosmic Garden. I don't know if you can see the image too well like this, but it's also very detailed. However, unlike Mantis Mundi, it's only 500 pieces. So I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bit more manageable. And actually what I was thinking in choosing this puzzle is that I have a feeling that doing this puzzle is going to train me a little bit in some of the textures that are in an R.S. Conant art and fable puzzle so that I might actually be able to go back to Mantis Mundi and tackle that one and feel a little bit more confident. So to give you a little bit more information about this puzzle, one of the nice things about art and fable is that on the back of the box, I will post an image of this, they give you a little bit of background information about the artist. I think this is great because not every puzzle company does that. Sometimes they don't even really tell you who the artist is. Um, but this one gives you a lot of great backstory and they have a nice interesting blurb about R.S. Conant on here. So they say, his paintings open windows into a rarely seen world teeming with vibrant and complex life forms. Taking inspiration from the biological phenomena of the natural world, Conant depicts imaginative portraits of flora and fauna particularly of oceanic origins, with microscopic detail. Conant's work brings a bizarre underworld into existence, challenging our perceptions of the world around us and our place within it. I think that's a very cool description of his artwork and his style. And if you look at his Instagram, you'll see that that's a thread that goes through a lot of his work. So I'm really interested to dive into this one. I happened to get this one on a sale on International Puzzle Day. Um, their puzzles are a little bit more expensive than some of the, you know, puzzles that you get from Buffalo Games, or uh, they're even a little bit more expensive than Ravensburger puzzles. But from what I can tell from the packaging and from diving into this a little bit, the product is really of high, excellent quality. So one of the things that they include in the box with the puzzle is this really cool box stand. I don't know how well you can see this, but you can punch out this little thing here, comes out, and then you can take the box lid and stand it up with this, which I think is just ingenious. And they give you one of these with every puzzle that you purchase. So if you're buying multiple art and fable puzzles, you can get some nice box stands that you can use for your other puzzles as well, if you so choose. So this is a really cool thing. I haven't seen this from any other brand. So this is a very cool innovation from Art and Fable Puzzle Company. I know there's other people who do this with wooden um, stands, but this is a really nice one. It's just cardboard. So it's not super fancy or anything, but it really gets the job done. And it's just a nice thing to throw into the box. Also inside the box, they give you a resealable plastic bag. So once you open up the puzzle and you do it, and you're getting ready to pack it away, they give you the resealable bag in there. You don't have to have your own. So I tend to like to put my pieces in a resealable bag once I've done them. 
uh, if, especially if it's a puzzle that I'm going to keep. So the other nice thing is they give you a very, very high quality print of the puzzle in the box with it. So this one, it has a similar blurb to the back of the box and on the front, it has this nice image. It's not a huge print, but it's very, very high quality. It's a very thick stock. It's like, a, it's basically like cardboard. It doesn't bend easily. So this I think is going to be a great resource for putting the puzzle together. I'm gonna keep this sort of in the front of the puzzle board while I'm working on the puzzle. So just to give you a comparison, this is the one I got for the 500 piece puzzle. And this is the one a little bit larger that was in the 1000 piece puzzle of Mantis Mundi. So this is just to give you a comparison. The 500 pieces is mm, a little bit more than half the size of the, the uh, Mantis Mundi. So I'm really looking forward to getting into this puzzle and getting to work on it. And uh, I'm gonna check in with you in a little bit, but for this video, I expect that I'm main, mainly going to be doing a time lapse of the puzzle, and then I will check in with you and let you know how it is. So one of the innovations that Art and Fable prides itself on is its velvet touch pieces. So I don't know how much you can see, probably not too well from the video, but the feeling of the pieces is that they're kind of matte, but they're bordering on a little bit velvety in a way, the way that they feel. Um, they're also of a nice thickness, and the backing board is this blue type of uh, board that's a little bit reminiscent of Ravensburger puzzles. So I just thought I would kind of highlight what the pieces look like. Um, they're really nice and they're uh, not too large in terms of the size, so they are a little bit intimidating that even for a 500 piece puzzle, these are pretty small, but I'm really looking forward to diving into this. The pieces look really cool. I love all the colors. You know, they're these really interesting looking artichoke looking textures you know, these different kind of green pods, just everything about the way the pieces look has me excited to dive in.
So here I am back with the puzzle a couple of days later. I finished this one a few nights ago, but I was feeling under the weather for the last couple of days, so I waited to film my final thoughts until I could get through it without coughing. So I really liked doing this puzzle. A couple of impressions of it. I was actually sort of surprised by how small the overall puzzle was. I'm sure the dimensions of the puzzle were online when I bought it, but I just kind of assumed it was going to be sort of a larger 500 piece puzzle like I'm used to. But it's actually 18.9 inches by 13.4 inches. So it's kind of small, honestly, for a 500 piece puzzle. I'm not complaining about that. I actually think it's kind of nice because if you had a smaller surface to puzzle on, this one would be a perfect one to do. And the pieces are not ridiculously small, so there's nothing about it that made it difficult to do. Um, I really loved all of the little details in this puzzle. Um, I'm going to show you a few screenshots while I speak, and you can see some of the very oddball looking creatures that are hidden in the puzzle. Uh, in plain sight. I mean, they're right there front and center, but because of how busy the image is, it doesn't immediately jump out at you that some of these creatures have very strange human-like faces, and there are all these little, you know, hidden creatures that are kind of in the cracks between one object or another. Um, I really loved all of that detail that was in there. It was a very rich puzzle in terms of the imagery, and I kind of enjoyed sort of sinking my teeth into it as I got the pieces together. Um, so overall, I really loved my very first uh, complete Art and Fable puzzle experience. Um, I wish I could transmit to you the feeling of these pieces through this video because they sell them as being Velvet Touch, um, and they really do feel very nice to the touch. Um, they don't quite feel like Velvet to me in the traditional sense, but when you run your hands over it, you can feel just the slight resistance of the pieces. You could tell that they wouldn't just kind of um, pass over each other in a slippery fashion if you were trying to slide pieces on top of one another. Um, they are just a little bit more velvety, I suppose, than a, a traditional piece. So it's not fully velvet, but it's velvet touch, and I enjoyed the experience of doing it. I don't know if it is a deal breaker for me one way or the other. I think that, um, you know, puzzles without this technology are just as nice to me as this one. But I did like that it didn't have a lot of glare because sometimes that can be an issue when you're doing a puzzle and you are trying to do it in good lighting. Um, so that much I did appre appreciate. And it does have sort of a more deluxe feeling than some of the other puzzles that I've done. So. Um, considering the price point of the puzzle, which is a little bit higher than most in the 500 piece uh, category, I did appreciate that they went above and beyond to make the experience a, a nice one. When I bought this puzzle on Puzzle Day, I bought two other puzzles from Art and Fable. I'll show them to you now really quickly. So this one is called Transcendent Migration, and the artwork is by Julie Bell. I'll try to get it here so that you can see it without the ring light on it. And I just love something about this imagery. I love the um, distinct sections of the orangey red and the darker blues and grays and this white section and the images of the flying birds here going across the image. So I'm really looking forward to putting this one together. And this one's 750 pieces. So it's kind of in between the 500 piece and the, the larger 1000 one that broke my brain a while back. So I feel like this is gonna be another perfect puzzle. And then I also got this one, which is called Daughters of the Sea. And this one is giving me serious uh, Little Mermaid style vibes, sort of like the traditional um, fairy tale. Um, it's, you know, this younger mermaid and maybe two sisters and sort of an older mermaid in the middle or a sea witch or something. I'm not entirely sure what this image is representing. I'll eventually read the description when I do the puzzle. But I just enjoyed the watery imagery of this one and the, the sort of the way that the hair is kind of suspended in the middle of the, of the image and like the variation of the blues and greens in here. So I think this is gonna be another beautiful one. This one looks a little bit more difficult because there are some sort of large sections of the same type of color. So I'm probably gonna wait on this one a little longer. Um, probably I'll do the other one first. Um, but that said, after finishing this microcosmic garden puzzle, I'm now really excited to go on and try some other art and fable puzzles because I've learned that the experience is really worth it. So on that note, let me know in the comments if you've ever done an art and fable puzzle and if you have what your favorite one was, if you've done more than one. 
And also, if you like this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up and like the video. And also hit subscribe on my channel so you can see all of the other great videos that I have coming up. I've got many exciting things in the pipeline. Very soon I will have some more content for you and I'm really looking forward to sharing some more puzzles with you. So until I speak with you again, in the meantime, happy puzzling.